One of the leading singer-songwriters of the 60s and 70s, Gordon Lightfoot is Canada's most successful contemporary folk artist, establishing himself as an important songwriter in the mid-60s and becoming a major international recording star in the following decade. Lightfoot's songs are literate but down-to-earth and deal with personal matters as well as global issues in a manner that's poetic yet accessible and his rich, strong voice is a superb vehicle for his material. Though his songs are versatile, enough that many artists have enjoyed success with his tunes, his albums of the 60s establish his reputation as a strong songwriter in the contemporary folk style, but the richer, more mature approach of 1970s, If You Could Read My Mind, made him an international star, while 1974's Sundown and 1976's Summertime Dream solidified his status as a major figure in the singer-songwriter movement. 1993's Waiting for You was a reminder that Lightfoot was still a talent to be reckoned with, and 2020's solo found him still eager to perform at the age of 80. To Gordon. I've known Gordon for a long time, and uh, I know he's been offered this award before, but he has never accepted it because uh, he wanted me to come and give it to him. So, uh, anyway, he's somebody of uh, rare talent and all that. And here's a video clip now of his uh, recent and not so recent achievements. Right, here he is now, Gordon Lightfoot. I want to thank Bob Dylan again for doing that, and uh, he go, he and I go back to. Uh, sort of the Albert Grossman office in New York, which uh, uh, I was signed with uh, through Ian and Sylvia back when I was sort of starting to get in motion. And uh, I appreciate very much the fact that he would take the time to uh, come and help out one of his uh, old stable mates. I think you could call it that, or I was one of his, I don't know. He was there actually two, uh, two years before I was. And it's nice to get it from an idol younger than myself also. I, I, uh, and with that, I will take it and uh, proudly wear it and to the industry and uh, everybody here. It's been a great 25 years, and uh, I'm very much in commission. I feel good, I feel happy, and I'm ready to uh, continue on for an indefinite period of time doing concerts, whatever it is. I thank you very much.
Lightfoot was born in Orilla, Ontario on November 17, 1938. His mother had an interest in music and recognized her son's talent at an early age. He was singing in church at the age of five and came in second in a local talent competition when he was ten. At 12 years old, Gordon began studying piano and voice, learning the rudiments of both pop and classical styles, and after winning a Toronto Kiwanis Festival Music Contest in 1951, he performed as part of a special concert at Toronto's Massey Hall, widely regarded as Canada's equivalent to New York's Carnegie Hall in terms of prestige. After Lightfoot's voice changed, he taught himself to play guitar, and began performing with a folk group called the Teen Timers, and also took up drumming and singing with the Barbershop Quartet. After graduating from high school, he moved to California to study orchestration and jazz composition at the Westlake College of Music. While Gordon found work singing on demo recordings and commercial jingles in Hollywood, he didn't care for life in California and returned to Toronto to focus his efforts on folk and country music. In 1960, he became a member of the Swinging Eight, the in-house vocal group on the popular Canadian television series Country Hoedown, a position he held for two years. Formed a duo with fellow singer Terry Whalen called the Two Tones. While the Two Tones were popular enough to play at Canada's celebrated Mariposa Folk Festival and release an album in 1962, the duo was short-lived and Lightfoot gave Europe a try in 1963, spending some time in Great Britain and hosting an eight-week BBC TV series, The Country and Western Show. By this time, he'd begun playing occasional solo dates and had a regional hit in Canada with a single, Remember Me, I'm the One a moody pop ballad. In 1963, Lightfoot discovered the work of Bob Dylan and began approaching his songwriting in a new and more personal style. Ian and Sylvia Tyson, the popular Canadian folk duo, heard Lightfoot performing some of his new material at a club in Toronto and were impressed enough that they added some of his songs to their repertoire. Ian and Sylvia also brought Lightfoot songs to the attention of their manager, Albert Grossman, who signed Gordon to a management contract. A number of major artists began recording Lightfoot's material, most notably Peter, Paul, and Mary, who enjoyed hits with Early Morning Rain and For Loving Me and Marty Robbins. He topped the country charts with Ribbon of Darkness. And in 1966, Lightfoot signed a recording contract with the United Artists Records, and his first solo album, simply called Lightfoot, earned favorable reviews and was a most modest commercial success. Between 1967 and 1969, Gordon Lightfoot would record three more studio albums and a live LP for United Artists, and he became a major star in his native Canada, where his albums often spun off hit singles, and he began headlining annually at Massey Hall to sold-out crowds. But in the United States, his songs were best known as recordings by others. In 1970, after Lightfoot's contract with United Artists ran out, he broke ties with Grossman and signed a new record deal with the Reprise label. Lightfoot's first album for Reprise, Sit Down Young Stranger, boasted a more polished and sophisticated production than his UA material, and it spawned a long overdue U.S. hit, If You Could Read My Mind. The single rose to the top five of the pop charts, and after the album was retitled If You Could Read My Mind, it reached the top ten. While Lightfoot had finally achieved international success, he continued to live and base his operations in Canada, and his next album, 1971's Summer Side of Life, featured several tunes focused on life in his homeland. In 1972, Gordon released two albums, Don Quixote and Old Dan's Records, but he was forced to cut back on his touring commitments after he was diagnosed with Bell's Palsy. In 1974, he returned with the album Sundown, 
which included the title tune and Carefree Highway, both of which became major hit singles, and his next two albums would also feature pop hits. Summertime Dream included the modern-day folk narrative, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, and Cold on the Shoulder included Rainy Day People. Lightfoot's United Artists material had been reissued on a regular basis since If You Could Read My Mind became a hit, but he'd become disenchanted with the production and performances on his early albums, and the 1975 collection's Gord's Gold featured new recordings of 10 songs from his days at UA, as well as 12 more than recent hits. From 1978 onward, Lightfoot's presence on the singles charts began to fade, and while he continued to record and tour regularly, his stardom in the United States declined. Though his annual run of shows at Massey Hall confirmed he still had a large and loyal audience at home, Lightfoot also began devoting more time to benefit shows for various charitable concerns, including world hunger and the environment. He dabbled in acting, starring in the 1982 films Harry's Tracy and Desperado, and playing a country singer on the short-lived American television series Hotel in 1988. In 1986, he was inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. Lightfoot began experiencing a creative revival in the 90s, recording two of his best-reviewed albums in decades, 1993's Waiting for You and 1998's A Painter's Passing Through. But his career nearly came to a halt in early 2002 when he suffered an abdominal aortic aneurysm. He was in a coma for six weeks and had a three-month stay in the hospital. He survived the illness, and in 2003, he was named a Companion of the Order of Canada, the highest honor the nation bestows on civilians. Early 2004 saw the release of Harmony, an album Lightfoot began working on before he fell ill, and by the end of the year, he was back on the road. Lightfoot experienced another health scare in the fall of 2006 when he suffered a minor stroke that cost him some mobility in his right hand. But within six months, he was able to play guitar again and continued to perform on a regular basis. In February 2010, word spread on the internet that Lightfoot had died and many Canadian news organizations picked up the story. However, the singer himself happened to hear the news report about it while driving home from a dental appointment and displaying an admirable sense of humor, contacted a Winnipeg radio station to confirm he was still alive despite reports to the contrary. In 2012, Lightfoot released All Live, a collection of recordings from his many appearances at Massey Hall. It was only his second live album in a career lasting over 40 years. Lightfoot toured regularly into the late 2010s, during which time Real Gone released the double disc collection, the complete singles 1970 to 1980 in 2019. After discovering a cache of demos and unreleased songs written in 2001 and 2002, Lightfoot decided the songs deserved an audience. He then recorded 10 of them accompanied by only by his acoustic guitar for 2020's Solo, his first studio album in 16 years. On May 1, 2023, Gordon passed away from natural causes. He was 84 years old. Our hearts go out to his family, friends, and fans. Rest easy now, Gord. Thank you for the music and memories. Thanks to all of you for watching.